guys? This is WWE News and Rumors Week in Review for the week ending April 14th, 2013. Saturday night. Figured I'd bring you guys the news and rumors a day early. I got a ton of stuff to go through. I am JD, if you guys don't already know. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. You're going to enjoy what you see. The number one place is going to be this channel for WWE News. The best opinions, the best news, the most timely news right here on JD's channel. Let's get right into the news, guys. I got a ton of stuff. I'm going to start off with the hottest topic this week, and that is The Rock. Now, a bunch of people, including myself, you know, were very skeptical of this injury, but The Rock is indeed injured and legit injured. He pulled his uh, abdominal muscle. Um, it, it apparently was uh, torn off its pelvis or whatever. I don't know the whole details of the injury, but... There, there's rumors going around today, I'm hearing, that The Rock may be finished with the WWE completely because he doesn't want to jeopardize his Hollywood movie career. But, uh, like I said, as I just noted in the intro, guys, The Rock suffered a hernia, a torn abductor muscle, uh, and, a, and a torn abdominal muscle during his WrestleMania 29 match with John Cena. It is believed the initial injury happened when he took the first attitude adjustment from Cena. The Rock continued to wrestle, and the word is that the muscle continued to tear from his pelvis. By the time the match was over, both his abdominal and abductor muscles were completely torn off the pelvis. Now, I was actually hoping that The Rock was playing uh, with the entire thing and that he really wasn't hurt because I really, did, I really did want to go off on him. I really do think that The Rock was just back for another paycheck for the payday. A lot of people said that he was doing it to give back to the fans. I don't believe that for one second. He's very lackluster in the ring. He, he didn't have the, the dedication to the product, uh, even though he was trying to juggle that in the movie career at the same time. There was no intensity. There was no creativity in his promos. To me, The Rock failed coming back into the WWE, especially being the WWE champion. Uh, who do I want to see WWE Champion between John Cena and The Rock? Obviously, I want to see John Cena because I know John Cena is dedicated to the product. He's going to give you 100%. The man doesn't have a bad match, ever. But the John Cena character is stale, so it's like, oh, you know, it's a lose-lose situation with John Cena. But The Rock, you know, I, I do want him to get better. I don't want him to, to be injured. And, you know, th this injury couldn't have come at a worse time because my next piece here, The Rock was scheduled to be beat down by Brock Lesnar on the post-WrestleMania 29 Raw, which was this past Monday, uh, to set up a WrestleMania 30 match, but he had to return to Miami for, uh, for his injuries because of the injury he suffered from John Cena. Now, according to those close to the situation, Rock was the one who came up with this angle to be beat down by Brock Lesnar. Monday afternoon was described as, as panic because Vince McMahon led the writing team in redoing the entire show. Brock Lesnar himself was kept off the show uh, when word that The Rock wasn't going to be there because it's now the start of his new contract and he has very limited TV dates over the next year. So WWE officials didn't want to waste uh, a Brock Lesnar appearance without something major happening. Now, this was The Rock's idea is what I'm hearing. So this does give it a glimmer of hope that it may happen somewhere down the line. You don't necessarily need to build for WrestleMania 30 immediately following that night on Monday Night Raw. You don't need to do that. Um, they have plenty of time for this angle to materialize into something great. Uh, I hope The Rock gets better. He's going to let his injuries heal on their own. He's going to film Hercules next. And hopefully we'll see him back in the WWE because I do want to see him fight Brock Lesnar. The match he had, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link you guys in the description. I want you guys to watch this match. This is The Rock that I know back from 2002. The man put on a great fucking match with Brock Lesnar. It was fucking classic. Brock Lesnar won the WWE Championship for the first time at SummerSlam 2002. This was The Rock. This is The Rock I remember. This, this Rock that we're seeing now, I don't know who this is, but hopefully we'll get a glimmer of, uh, of this angle materializing for between Brock Lesnar and The Rock at WrestleMania because I want to see it. I'm sure you guys want to see it. So hopefully he gets better soon and we'll see him back in the WWE ring now that I know he's injured. It was legit, uh, but there was a chance that if it wasn't legit, I was going to go off on him like I usually do, but uh, I hope he get, I hope, hopefully he gets better. Batista returning to the WWE. This was quite interesting. Former WWE superstar Batista has been working out vigorously in recent months and is now back to his WWE weight of 280 pounds, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Batista dropped considerable weight when he began training in mixed martial arts where he won his uh, unspectacular, they quoted, first professional fight last year. The second fight never came to fruition, and Batista's MMA gym in Tampa closed last year. 
Batista has publicly stated that he definitely wants to return to the WWE and even named Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker, and Triple H as the superstars he wants to work with. With him getting back in shape, a return to the WWE might not be far off for Batista. I'm, I'm sure you guys wanted, wanted to know. You've been questioning me. What, what's the news about Batista? That's the news about Batista, guys. Do you want to see him in the, WWE, in the WWE ring? I'm sure you do. Do I? Definitely. Batista's work as a heel before he quit. The last program he worked with John Cena was the best work of his career. Hopefully he gets back in the ring. They could use that star power. They could use that main event name on Monday Night Raw because the roster is looking too thin because the WWE does not build their, their mid-card. They, you know, they're lacking in that star power now that all the part-timers are there. Sign Batista to a one-year deal. Let him fight all the guys that you got on the roster that you want him to fight. Get him at WrestleMania, and that's it. You know, Batista's aging. He's 44 years old, but I do want to see him back in the WWE ring, and I'm sure you guys do as well. News out of Monday Night Raw, guys. It is now acknowledged within the WWE that the post-WrestleMania Raw is now the biggest event of the year for Monday Night Raw. For WrestleMania 30 in New Orleans, there is talk that they might hold both WrestleMania and Raw at the Superdome to try and build up Raw as a can't-miss super show. I'm all for that. Monday Night Raw sucked on Monday. For those who, who say I'm too critical of the product, why don't you open your fucking eyes and see? The product was garbage. The only thing that was good about Monday Night Raw was Ziggler and the crowd in New Jersey. That was it. There was nothing spectacular on that show whatsoever. The only other thing that interests me was his Ryback. Is he turning heel? Is he not turning heel? I'll have more on that in a little bit. CM Punk was kept off uh, Monday, Night, Monday Night Raw to sell his loss to The Undertaker because he's banged up. As noted, he will be on next week's Raw. Um, the Rock's torn abductor muscle and abdominal muscle, um, that injury is uh, reported as a legitimate injury, like I just stated in the beginning. The story is that The Rock left WrestleMania abruptly after uh, learning that the injury uh, happened mid-match. He, he immediately went home and got treatment because he has uh, Hercules to film. You guys know about that. Moments after winning the World Heavyweight title on last night's Raw, Dolph Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler spoke with the match striker on the WWE app. Ziggler entered the backstage area to a round of applause. Ziggler said he deserves the win, and it's been a long time coming. Ziggler says the title proves he backs up what he says. I'm very happy for Dolph Ziggler, and there's reports right now of his title reign lasting through most of this year. The guy deserves it. Leave him as champion. You're going to have great title matches on, on uh, SmackDown and Monday Night Raw for that belt, and especially on pay-per-view. That World Heavyweight Championship will have meaning now that Dolph Ziggler has it because he is a superstar that gives you his all, and his matches and his work ethic is amazing. The WWE Championship has John Cena. Dolph Ziggler is going to be the guy to watch out of both championships. You watch. Talk even before uh, the Raw closing angle with Ryback and John Cena that the WWE Championship match for Extreme Rules is going to be Ryback versus John Cena. That was talked about way before that event on Monday Night Raw ever happened to close the show. Um, uh, this has to materialize a little bit for me to gain interest in this. I don't know what's going on with Ryback. I don't know if he's a face. I don't know if he's a heel. But uh, they got my interest a little bit. I want to see where they go with that. I'll give the WWE the benefit of the doubt to see how this materializes over the weeks to come because we do have one month before Extreme Rules. The Undertaker was said to be doing fine after WrestleMania 29 considering his physical condition. Despite the tease with the Shield on Raw, where is that he is not expected to wrestle anytime soon. For you guys expecting The Undertaker and Kane to be teaming up with Daniel Bryan against the Shield at Extreme Rules, it's not going to happen. I'll have more on the Shield and Team Hell No in a little bit. Fandango's theme song continues to be dominating on the iTunes charts following Monday Night's Raw's episode. The song is number 8 right now on the iTunes US Top 10 Soundtracks song chart and number 3 on the UK Top 10 Soundtrack song chart. I don't know what's going on with this Fandango theme music, but I'm in the spirit too. I'm about to change. I just downloaded the fucking song right now. I'm going to change my theme song on my phone, my ringer which was already CM Punk, I'm going to change it to Fandango's theme music because my brother's got a little thing now. He can't get the song out of his head. So every time I see him, I'm, going to, I'm just going to purposely play the song just to annoy the fuck out of him. But that's going to be my new ring. I'm glad this Fandango character's taken off the way it is. You had Daniel Bryan last year with Yes, 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 that chant. Now you got Fandango this year with the theme song. It's, it's great that these little things pick up and uh, you know, gain steam with the WWE Universe. And it's fun. It gives you know the events, the live events, a great atmosphere when stuff like this happens because... The Yes, Yes, Yes chant is my favorite thing in the WWE right now. And this Fandango theme song thing and the dance that the crowd was doing in New Jersey, I hope this takes off just as well as uh, Daniel Bryan's uh, Yes, Yes, Yes chant. It said that the next top three NXT wrestlers who are close to being called up to the WWE's main roster are Bray Wyatt, Cassius Ono, and Adrian Neville, the former PAC uh, from the independent circuit. I can't wait. I love all the guys that they got on NXT, especially Bray Wyatt. I love his character. And Cassius Ono, he's going to be someone to look forward to. A highly 
uh, you know, CM Punk reps him very well because he used to work together in Ring of Honor. So you got to be looking out for those two guys. I don't know too much about uh, PAC or Adrian Neville now, what they're calling him in the WWE. I'm not too familiar with his work, but I hear he's amazing in the ring. So, I'm, you know, obviously it's new talent. I'm sure you're all excited about seeing new talent on the WWE roster. Hopefully these guys are all called up um, right before SummerSlam hits, right in, that, in the middle of the summer. The current plan for Kane and Daniel Bryan. I told you I had news on the Shield. The current plan for Kane and Daniel Bryan is to defend the WWE Tag Team Championships against two members of the Shield, likely at Extreme Rules uh, in May. It's expected this is where Kane and Daniel Bryan will drop the titles finally and then go their separate ways. It'll be great for the Tag Team Division to get new blood into the Tag Team Division with the Shield. It'll be great for the Shield's entire stable to have some gold around their waist. And it's going to be great for Daniel Bryan because he's going to go off and do bigger and better things like he deserves. Finally, Dolph Ziggler cap cap captured the World Heavyweight Championship. Now we got Daniel Bryan. He's the next deserving one because he's been working his ass off to get one of those top-tier belts in the WWE and be finally you know, in the main event scene on WWE. Ryback's heel turn. Monday Night's Raw, you guys seen. Uh, Raw was advertising Ryback. Is he a heel or is he not a heel? But this coming Monday, WWE is advertising John Cena and Alberto Del Rio versus Ryback and the new World Heavyweight Champion Dolph Ziggler. Many fans are wondering if Ryback's attack on John Cena meant he has officially turned heel. While this news doesn't necessarily guarantee that fact, it does give us an idea where the WWE might want to be going with the Ryback character in the future. It's unknown whether this match will take place on the actual televised part of the show or simply be a dark match for the local crowd. I don't think this is going to be on the actual show. I do think it's going to be a dark match. I am not in favor of turning Ryback heel right now. He's, you know, he, he worked too hard. The WWE worked too hard. They put themselves through that stressful situation last year where they booked him to fight CM Punk in the Hell in the Cell. That last minute ins insertion of Ryback into that title match, getting the crowd finally to believe he's a main event star. The WWE worked too hard to get him a as a believable face, as a dominant face. Even though he's been on a, you know, on a losing streak five, uh, in the last five pay-per-views for the WWE, that doesn't, you know, exclude the fact that he's not a fucking monster. He's a monster uh, on the WWE roster. He's an intimidating force. I would want to see John Cena versus Ryback as a, as a, as a face. Two faces going together for the WWE Championship. It's something we don't see often. It'll be a, a breath of fresh air. And, and it's not illegal for two faces or two good guys to go against each other in a World Heavyweight Championship match and, uh, you know, main event to pay-per-view. We've seen it with Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. Nobody had a problem with that. Obviously, John Cena is going to be booed out of the building, so it's like John Cena is going to be the heel anyway, because nobody wants to see him as champion. He's going to get booed like he usually does. You're going to have the John Cena sucks chance. Uh, you know, you're going to have the let's go ride back chance. Feed me more. It's going to be good for the WWE in, in itself, and it should make the Extreme Rules pay per view, you know, exciting, but not as exciting as last year because John Cena was working with Brock Lesnar, and that was just a must see. But you know, I expect this to be a decent match. I'm not putting all all my eggs in one basket with this match yet. The WWE does have one month to you know, make me believe in this storyline. So we'll see. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I want to see where they go with this. And finally, guys, Mark Henry is scheduled to begin a feud with Sheamus. At one point, the feud was discussed for WrestleMania 29 before the undercard was redone. This is just uh, a major yawn fest right here. I really don't want to see Mark Henry and Sheamus feud. You know, what is, the, what is they going to be feuding about? What are they going to be feuding over? Mark Henry should be moving up the ranks for a world championship run. Uh, against Dolph Ziggler, get in line for a championship match. Uh, I really don't want to see Sheamus fight Mark Henry. It's just going to be the same thing with the big show. It's going to be unentertaining and boring. They had one match out of three that was actually good. Even though I like Mark Henry, you know, Sheamus' character has been floundering, you know, with the com comedic bullshit. He needs to get down and dirty and just go at it like he usually does. He's, he's Irish, he kicks ass, and that's it. Mark Henry, on the ha other hand, I want to see him in, a little, in something a little bit more important. But if Sheamus is going to go over for Mark Henry, and you know if Mark Henry is going to get the victory out of this feud, it's going to be worth it because it's only going to build Henry uh, more and more uh, towards that World Heavyweight Championship title reign, hopefully by the end of the year. But that is all, guys. That is all the news and rumors I have for you. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you have not done so. I'm out. Catch me back on Monday Night Raw, guys, this Tuesday. I'll be back on my normal schedule. I'll talk to you all later. Peace.